Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Knows Best here. So this is the iPhone of scooters, electric scooters that is. And so this is the Unagi Model 1. So what does it mean to call something the iPhone of electric scooters? Well, just look at the packaging. I mean, the box that this comes in, it looks like an iPhone box. Like, I actually don't wanna throw this away. So most electric scooters that I use, they come inside like a cardboard box with styrofoam everywhere, but this was very neatly packaged. And this is important because you do get a 30 day return period for the scooter. So if you don't like it, you can just return it with no questions asked. And then this is a very easy scooter to kind of get set up and start using. I mean, the only thing you really need to assemble is the handlebars. And so once you take the handlebars out of the box, you have one electric cable that you need to connect. And then once you get the handlebars in place, you just have have four different screws that you need to tighten up and boom the scooter is pretty much ready to go now you do want to give it a charge before you do head out for your first time even the cable management is really good as it snakes over to the right hand side of the scooter and then it's nicely tucked away within the frame um, and then also all the little touches as far as the angles and things like that just really make this scooter stand out amongst almost all the other scooters that you'll see out there on the road now, there are two different versions of the scooter. So you have the E250, which is a single motor version, and then you have the E500, which is this one, um, and this one is a dual motor version. Now, another difference between the scooters is going to be the weight. So the E250 weighs 23 pounds, and this one, the E500, weighs 26.5 pounds. Now, both scooters are made out of a combination of aluminum and also carbon fiber, and the main center tube is made out of the same carbon fiber that's used in some of these SpaceX rockets. So definitely shout out to Elon Musk. Um, but yeah, it's really light so it's very easy to kind of carry around and, and to throw into your trunk and stuff and then also too to be able to fold this thing up to be able to carry it you have a folding mechanism which is really simple to use and once you get it folded down it does have a little bit of give there so when you do pick it up it kind of just feels really balanced in your hand so you can flip it around twist it like I am doing and try not to break your wrist but yeah it's really easy to carry this but I did wish that the handlebars did fold in now the handlebars don't reach out too far on the side where it's kind of getting caught up on things when I am putting it inside and out side of my car but if they did fold it just wouldn't hurt now let's talk about the handlebars a little bit because i really do like the rubber that you get so it really gives me a very nice grip and hold over the handlebars and then also too you will find the buttons and also the paddles and stuff like that that make this scooter go so um, you have paddles for the braking and also the acceleration and both of these paddles are kind of pressure sensitive so the more you press down on them um, the faster that it will go or the harder that it will break and then something else i like is also just the control system on the scooter and the buttons and stuff like that because it's a very cool LCD display that you have here simple clean not a lot of information going on here just the things that you really need to know so once you press the power button for about three seconds the screen and the scooter will turn on and then you'll see information like your mileage your speed and also which riding mode that you're in and to change some of these different modes you have a couple of buttons on the handlebars and so the button right above the brake paddle is going to be for your horn And yeah, this is a very high pitched horn and my dogs definitely didn't like it. Uh, but also too, this scooter does have some LED lights. Um, so you can turn those on just by pressing the power button once. And these are pretty bright. And I actually like these because some lights don't actually illuminate enough in your path when you're trying to ride at night. But the lights on this definitely allow me to see clearly in front of me for a good distance. And then there is a button right above the throttle paddle. And this button will allow you to change between the different riding modes. So you have three different modes with the beginner mode being level one. So level one will allow you to get up to around 11 miles per hour and then the second mode will allow you to get up to around 13 miles per hour and then the advanced mode will allow you to get up to the maximum speed of around 17 miles per hour and so let's talk about speed for a second so i weigh around 225 pounds or so depending on what i ate earlier today um, but i was able to kind of hover around 16 miles per hour on flat land and then of course when i'm going down the hill i was able to get around 18 miles per hour or so so definitely it's not going to be the fastest in this particular category 
category of scooters, but it's a really good speed to kind of zoom and to make sure you're not going to be holding up too much traffic. But I am a big fan of the acceleration of the scooter. So I was able to get up to max speed in about four or five seconds, which is not bad. And so this is in the dual motor mode, but you can switch down to the single motor mode if you want a little bit of a slower start. Now you can still reach that maximum speed, but it's just gonna take you a little bit longer to get there. Now, why would you want this mode? Well, I think it's gonna be good for beginners and people who are not really comfortable on these scooters or for kids. So now they can have that like a smooth start when they're trying to take off. But for me, of course, I left it in dual motor mode because I am a rebel. No, but I actually do like just being able to have that quick acceleration, especially if you're out on the roads and you may need to kind of pick up in a hurry to avoid a situation or so. Um, it's good to have that extra kick and power inside of it. Now, I did notice something when I was cruising around at the maximum speed, and that's the fact that the scooter did slow itself down. So when I was at 16 miles per hour, it was slow down to 15 and then jump back up to 16, even though I'm going on a completely flat land. But yeah, it felt like the scooter was holding itself back, like it had extra power and had a couple more miles per hour that it can go, but it would kind of say, nah, you know what, let me chill out here and slow myself down. Now the power that you do get from the scooter will be mostly found in the wheels. And so this dual motor version does have a 250 watt motor in the rear wheel and also to the front wheel. And now let's talk about the wheels because you can see they look different, right? They don't look like your typical scooter wheel. And that's because these are solid rubber 7.5 inch wheels. So they don't have any air inside of them. So you don't have to worry about them going flat. So that's really going to allow the maintenance to be very low um, on this tire. It's really non-existent. And then also you will find some little air gaps inside of there and you can kind of actually see me um, hiding through the wheel there. But um, what this allows the wheel to do is actually to act as a little bit of a cushion to the road because the scooter does not have any type of suspension system. So when you are riding over bumps and things like that, you are going to feel it and these tires will help a little bit, but they really made this scooter for city streets. But unfortunately, some of these streets out here can be a little rough, but for the most part, I was fine with it, but I did my best to avoid any type of potholes and things like that. But I did take it on some gravel and you can see that it actually handled well. Like I didn't feel like I had loose control over it, but not having a suspension system just meant that you felt almost every little rock that you went over. And when I stepped off of the scooter after riding on this, uh, it felt like I was on a roller coaster a little bit, you know, that little bit of a tingly feeling that you get in your legs. Uh, that's what it feels like sometimes and when you are going over rough roads. But again, I wouldn't take this out in mud and a lot of dirt and stuff like that, but I would ride it down some grass and things like that. And I think it should be fine. Now also in the wheels, you will find the dual electronic anti-lock brakes. And I didn't actually measure this out myself, but they say you should be able to get to a stop in around 13 feet or so on dry land. But for me, when I was riding around like the situation when this lady walked in front of me, I felt comfortable with coming to a stop even at maximum speed speed, but also you do have a friction brake that's in the rear fender. So you can step down on it with your foot and that will get you to a stop as well. All right. So that's most of the technical specs that I wanted to go over. Now, let me just really talk about how it is to ride this scooter. Um, so one thing around St. Louis, we do have some hills here and there. And I found that this scooter was able to get up those hills without a problem. Um, now this one that was by the St. Louis arch was a pretty steep hill, but it's pretty long as well. So it wasn't like a rapid incline. But when I did start riding up it, I didn't reach the maximum speed. I was maybe around like 11 or 12 miles per hour, but that was a really nice steady speed up this incline. And then the scooter does have a water resistance rating of IP54. So if you do get yourself caught out in the rain like I did, um, it will be fine. Like I wasn't worried about it at all. Um, and actually the handling was still pretty good even though the road was wet. So these tires uh, may not be the biggest, fattest tires that you can get out there, but I still felt comfortable riding up hills and also in the rain at the same time. Okay, so the official range for the scooter is about 15 and a half miles. So I made it out here to Forest Park here in St. Louis and I'm going to see how long I can go and hopefully I don't run out of battery before I can get back to my car. So let's see how long it lasts. Okay, so while I'm showing you some footage from this distance test, let me talk about my experience in it because it was really fun. Like it was fun to ride this scooter on a dedicated path for things like bikes and runners and stuff like that. So this is kind of like the ideal way for me to ride this scooter. And I don't typically find myself wanting to ride a scooter all the way across town just for little short trips here and there, or just to get out to a park like this and experience some of that good weather. This scooter is made perfectly for that. And I actually got some compliments about this scooter too, because it looks good, as I said before, and this is just 
just a solid white paint job. But on their website, you can also customize this scooter with different solid colors and also two different limited time patterns that you can choose from. And then if you want even more customization, you can change the individual colors for the main tube or also the handlebars and also the main deck and you can mix and match the colors with that to make an unique combination. But all of these color changes will be costing you more money besides just doing the solid color changes. Um, but the patterns and the mix and the matching of the colors will you know, hurt your little pocket a little bit. All right, so I just wrapped up the distance test and let me get this helmet off. It is hot out here. Um, so I definitely didn't get the 15.5 miles and that's kind of the perfect settings that the manufacturer has. Again, I'm around um, 228 uh, pounds and I was able to get, let me double check, about 8.3 miles. So that's not bad. I mean, uh, this terrain, again, it wasn't completely flat. It did have some hills. And so the maximum rider weight for this scooter is about 275 pounds. So again, get out there and test it yourself. See how far you can go before you really try to rely on this thing to take you a good amount of distance without bringing a charger. But if you do take this to work or something like that, throw that charger in your bag. It's not really that, that big and heavy. And then you can always make sure you have maximum juice when you're ready to go home because this really is a commuter type scooter. So it's really made for or kind of quick city trips and things like that. And overall, it was a good ride. Now, there is one thing I did notice when I do ride sometimes, and that is the fact that this cover for the charging port sometimes get loose. And I don't think that's because of the vibration when you're riding. I think it's because it's so close to where the kickstand is stored. So you can see that when I do put the kickstand up and when I go to use it, my foot can accidentally touch this cover there. So hopefully in the next version, they could move the charging port maybe to the other side um, or just give some more space between the charging port and the kickstand. And this happened to me while it was raining. So it's a little bit of a concern. Um, everything turned out to be fine, but yeah, a little bit of refinement there would be nice. And sticking with the kickstand for a bit, one issue that I do have with it is that the tip of it is not really a big surface area. So sometimes when I'm on, you know, the uh, ground and it doesn't have a super smooth surface and may have some rocks or some gravel with it. It may take me a little bit of adjustment to kind of get this scooter to be able to securely stay up. So uh, I know if they did add like some rubber, you know, feet to it or something like that, it wouldn't be as sexy as the design for this is, but um, that would be one thing for some improvement. And real quick, let's take a look at the deck or the floorboard for the scooter. So it is made out of one solid piece of aluminum and it does have some silicone here at the top, which does have some ridges in it. And that's going to provide some surface for your shoes to be able to grip on. And then also, I just like that the fact that it's not like the sandpaper material, which I don't necessarily mind, but this is a more kind of premium or more of a sexy look to the floorboard. So look, the iPhone of scooters is what I'm calling this Unagi Model 1. And that's because it's sleek looking. It's very reliable, it's easy to set up, easy to maintain, and also very easy to use. And this is just a scooter that you really just can't go wrong with. Now, again, there are minor things that I would like to see better, like the kickstand and things like that. And also it wouldn't hurt if this scooter did have regenerative braking so you can get some juice back into the battery as you brake. And then also if the center column did raise and lower because I'm six feet tall and then sometimes I did find that when I was riding, I, I was kind of crouching down a little bit at times. But besides those things, this scooter is a really good safe Buy. So you can pick up this dual motor version for $990, but if you want the single motor version, you don't need all of that power, that will be running you $840. And so the prices for these scooters are definitely towards the higher end of this category of a commuter scooter. But even when you look at some of its competition, like the Ninebot Kick Scooter Max, the speed and the range are similar, but it's gonna take longer to charge and it can only support up to 220 pounds as far as a rider. So I wouldn't even make that limit. I know I need to lose weight, but that's just the case. Um, and also it is a single motor design. Design, right? So you really don't find a lot of dual motor scooters out there under a thousand dollars that get you the same type of performance and kick and design that this Unagi has. And also I, I like the fact that the Unagi does have a one year warranty. And then also in the first three months, if something does go wrong with your scooter, they'll just send you out a brand new one and not try to fix the one that you already have. So those things kind of weigh into my feelings of the scooter being a really good, solid all around scooter, even for that price point. But anyway, these are just my thoughts about this Unagi model one scooter. What do you think about it? Leave your comments comment down below. And so like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.